So today I tried overclocking the AMD Athlon X4950 to its absolute maximum and it was a complete fail. Yeah. Hey, what's up guys? My name is JD from JD Tech here and welcome back to the channel where we discuss PC passion tech reviews, unboxings, and setup design. So if you're into that sort of thing, consider subscribing and checking out the rest of the channel and become part of the Tech Junkie family. Now today, I tried overclocking the X4950 from AMD as far as possible and it was a complete failure. So I started out by just removing my Ryzen 1700 from my Aurora Frost build and I removed that and put in the AMD Athlon X4950 into the Gigabyte X370 Gaming 5 board. And that board is well capable of overclocking. I was able to overclock my Ryzen 1700 fairly well on a stock cooler, which was pretty good, on a very early revision of the BIOS. It wasn't as stable as it once was, and now it's even more stable. So uh, this should have no problem. I updated the BIOS and the chipset to their latest drivers, and everything was pretty much giving this the green light. I mean, I gave it as much of a chance to overclock as I possibly could. So when I plugged this bad boy in, I was assuming, you know, it's on the bulldozer architecture, but I know bulldozer isn't that great of an architecture. I think we all know that, but they overclocked fairly well. So why should this one be any of an exception? Now it could be the silicon lottery, of course, but there was literally no overclock at all none zip so i'm gonna go through my whole entire process and what happened explaining my complete story to you so at first uh i left it at 3.5 gigahertz so beyond 3.5 gigahertz this thing was idling at 3.67 and then under load it went to 3.64 and only topped out at 3.64 and i'll throw an image up on the screen as well showing you that yeah that was that was the peak right there and i don't understand why it's actually lower than the idling frequency. But anyways, uh, that was the same frequency across CPU-Z and Cinebench. So moving on, I put this bad boy up at 3.9 gigahertz at the same voltage, of course, at 1.25. And we saw an idle 3.67 and under load 3.71 gigahertz. So uh, a little bit better uh, frequencies while under load versus the stock frequency, which was 3.64 but that's also within the margin of error because that's really not that much of a gain. Nonetheless, it never got close to 3.9 gigahertz. Uh, so that that's kind of disappointing. I wanted to boost this bad boy up to four gigahertz. So I, I increased the voltage from 1.25 to 1.28 because it crashed at 1.25 volts. And the BIOS read four gigahertz, but when I loaded up into Windows, it did not read four gigahertz it said max frequency was four gigahertz and i understand the cpu is under load so obviously it's not going to be running at the max overclock speed which it shouldn't because that would burn out the cpu but while under load it got nowhere close to four gigahertz which is a problem so at idle we were sitting at 3.68 gigahertz and under load it was at 3.72 gigahertz so it was only 0.01 gigahertz under load versus the under load for the 3.9 gigahertz frequency uh so <laughs> it really didn't make that much of a difference and didn't really boost the performance all that much when it came to the synthetic benchmarks and then i was like okay well let's push this thing just a little bit further 4.1 gigahertz at 1.3 volts for stability because it crashed at 1.28 so yeah i loaded up windows it read 4.1 max but never got anywhere close to the maximum so at idling speeds this was at 3.7 gigahertz and then once i put it under load for both cpu z and cinebench it got an identical frequency of 3.65 gigahertz which is only 0.01 gigahertz higher than the load frequency when it was at 3.5 gigahertz the stock frequency so yeah not that great at overclocking i don't know if it was just me with the silicon lottery and i just pulled a bad ticket but honestly i can't see how it could have been any of my other components since they overclocked my ryzen 1700 just fine and my ryzen 1400 overclocks just fine so i think it's just this processor there's nothing that really changes other than just the cpu itself so i i, I can't really narrow it down to any other variables 
So I think the overall general consensus among a lot of the reviewers is this is a processor to get you on the AIM4 platform. Although it would have been nice to have seen this overclock better. Uh, so, I mean, it is bulldozer architecture in 2017, so you really can't expect that much from it. But yeah, that's my overall experience with overclocking this chip. If you guys want to see a full review of this processor, let me know and I'll do one. Personally, I just don't think it's that important right now since I think there's a lot more uh, coming in within the next quarter of the year from both AMD and Intel to offer you better bangs for your bucks. And you could see potentially uh, lower prices on the current Ryzen processors and also KB Lake processors as well. So I would stick around and wait for that because my my overall opinion was just, you know, just don't stick to this right now. But if you absolutely need something right now, then yeah, I guess you can consider that. And if you're that person, you want to see a review of this processor, just let me know down in the comments below. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of this uh, video as far as experimenting and leveraging the CPU with overclocking and seeing how it performs and just this experimental type of video, I guess. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, let me know. And also consider subscribing if you haven't already. And thank you all so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.